Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you my helicopter model configuration on Edge TX. Ever since I got into flying model helicopters, I've been asked about my configuration for Edge TX. Before I go any further, I just want to say thanks to Freddy. Freddy shared his configuration with me. Now, since he gave it to me, I've made it my own and done my own thing. Another thing I want to point out is that this configuration is designed to work with Icon as a fly barless unit. If you're using something other than Icon, your mileage may vary. You may have to use different channels, different configurations, but at least you'll get an idea how I set up my inputs and my curves and my idle up curves and all that stuff stuff. Hopefully that'll be helpful to you as you look at the logic that I used in my radio configuration. If you do use an Icon flight controller, this should pretty much be plug and play. All right, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to show you is my second page of widgets because I've got two timers set up. I've got a flight time and total time. I just want to point that out to you so you can see that when I go through the timer configuration, you can see what I'm talking about. So flight time is a countdown timer. When the stick is moved up and my throttle lock is turned off, my flight timer starts counting down and my persistent timer starts counting up. You also notice that little blinking dot there. That's because I turn on SD card logging. I'm grabbing telemetry sensor data and putting it on my SD card on the radio when I fly the helicopter. One other thing I need to point out is that I've relocated my momentary switch from this corner to this corner. So my SF is momentary. See, when I let that go, it springs back. I physically swap them for personal reasons. You're, you will have a momentary switch on this side and you'll have a two position switch on this side. So when you hear me reference SH, that's because I moved my momentary switch over there and I put a two position switch over there. So my SH is always my throttle lock. That's a two position switch. Okay, let's get into the model configuration. For model named, I use T-Rex 500X and an image that I put on my card. Here are my timers. Notice under timer one, I've got name flight, I've got mode throttle and SH forward. So when I release my throttle stick and move my throttle forward, that allows that timer to start counting down. I have minute call turned on, which means every minute I get a notification that a minute has gone by. I also have beeps enabled, which means when I get below 10 seconds, I get beeps warning me that I'm out of flight time. Notice the persistent option is turned off. What that means is that this is a countdown timer because I specified a time of five minutes, which means my timer counts down from five down to zero. Persistent is turned off because I want to reset it and use it for every single flight. For timer two, I have one called total. I'm also using throttle and SH forward. Notice the start time on this one is zero, zero. That means it counts up from zero and it is set as persistent. So I have a manual reset. That's how I know how much time I put on a given airframe. I also have countdown set to silent, so I don't get any beep notifications. I just want the persistent timer to be quiet and accrue flight time. That's all I'm looking for. Nothing enabled for timer three. And I do want to show you that I've enabled extended limits. That's kind of necessary in ICON because in order to get the full sweep of output on your ICON setup, you need to sometimes go beyond 100. Extended limits let you do that. I'm not using any trims and no trim steps. So when you're flying a 3D helicopter, and that's another caveat I have to give, none of this really applies for a scale helicopter. This is intended to be a 3D helicopter, which means it has negative pitch, which means it rolls, it loops, it does all that 3D stuff. So I do want to point that out too. This is not meant to be a scale configuration. This is designed for a 3D helicopter. But in my case, because I'm using a fly barless controller, we don't use any trim at all. And the, the helicopter set up mechanically to be zeroed out and that's the way you set these up. Under throttle, notice I've got the source set to channel three. And the reason I do that is because I've got a special function that overrides channel three to be a negative 100, which means for the throttle source, when those timers start, it looks at what's going on with channel three versus the stick. If you use the stick and the stick is here, your timer can start even though you're not really flying. So I have mine look at channel three. Uh, there's also a trim switch identified, but I don't use that. 
Okay, for my switch positions, I'll run through these really quickly. I've got SA, SB, SD, and SH. SA is my idle up position, so I want that always when I select this model to be an idle up one, which for me is down. You may decide you want idle up one to be up and idle up three to be down. That's all personal taste on what you decide you want. For me, I want my idle up one to be down. I think of it like a gas pedal. I push that way when I wanna go faster. Uh, SB is my rate switch, so I have that down. SB also selects my banks on Icon. So if you are setting up banks, that's how I have mine working. I've got rates on the radio and banks on the Icon in, in case I choose to use them. Right now, my banks are all set the same. And then SD, that's how I turn on rate lock mode or headlock mode. I'll explain that in just a little bit, but right now I normally want SD to be up because I want headlock mode to be enabled. If you want a center beep for say throttle, you can turn this one on just by pressing on it. And as you pass through center, you will get a beep on your radio when you pass through center. I don't like any beeps. I, these days I like fewer and fewer beeps. I have the multi-module set with FreeSky X2 and D16 as a protocol because I'm using a RadioMaster R161 with that port V2. That gives me telemetry and signal over a single wire into the icon. Notice I did conduct a frequency fine tune and I have my fail safe mode set to no pulses. That's it for the model page. For the flight mode page, it's real simple. Everything's shut off. We don't use any trims, no nothing. This is just, everything is shut off. So for flight modes, everything is just kind of blanked out. Real easy on flight modes, right? Let's take a look at inputs. Under inputs, this is a normal. If you fly fixed wing, this should look pretty normal to you. I've got my SB switch set for rates, so I've got SB up, mid, and down. And you can see the aileron and elevator both switch to those rates. I'm using 100, 90, and 80 for my weights and 15% for my expo. Now, I know if you use flight contro controllers or fly barless controllers, you might argue that you should set your expo and your rates in the fly barless controller, and that's true, you can do that. Um, the reason I do it on the radio is because I can do it on the fly. I'm not advocating one way or the other. What I can tell you is that for Icon, this does work. So I've used it, it does work. Um, there is an argument to be made that says, always feed the Icon 100% and use the expo and rates within the Icon to change the feel of your sticks if you wanna do that. I do understand that argument, but so far this seems to be working out for me. I think when I get into more aggressive 3D style flying, I'll probably go back to that more purist model where I use 100% here, no expo, and I make any changes inside the icon. I probably will do that. If you're an advanced flyer, I would recommend that. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen. Okay, for throttle, this is where the odd stuff kind of happens if you're not used to it. Let me go through this real quick. SA down is my idle up one, and notice that my input curve is flat all the way. It's just north of 50%, and this does match up with what Icon recommends for idle up one in terms of percentage. But as I move my throttle stick down, you see that little indicator moving over to the left? And then when I get all the way down here, it's gonna drop off a cliff. The reason we do that is because by in idle up one, by setting it up this way, we have an additional safety that will kill the throttle by bringing this stick all the way down if you're in idle up one. Of course, you can use your throttle cut to kill it, but it's, it's just an additional safety measure. And all you have to do is just move the stick up just a little bit, and you are at full head speed for idle up one. Notice an idle up two, there's the curve, and then an idle up three, there's the curve. They are straight lines. There is no drop off. That throttle kill does not work if you're in idle up three or idle up two. So the curves are very simple. They're straight lines, and again, they match up with what Icon recommends. And also notice that they're activated with the switch SA. So I move my switch SA. When I move it all the way up, I apply the curve throttle three. When I put it in the middle position, I have the curve throttle two. And when I put it in the down position, I have the curve throttle one. That's all I'm doing on the input screen with my throttle is applying a curve to, to the throttle input based on the switch SA. 
for the rudder, very standard, no weights, no expo, just a straight rudder entry. And then for tail gain, this one's a little bit interesting because you do have to feed Icon a percentage of a switch in order to tell it how much tail gain you want for the gyro and how it moves your tail. So in my case, 52% locks it in pretty well at about 45% on the icon. But one thing I do want to share, you might say, well, how can, if it's always 52, why don't you just lock it in in the mixer at 52? And the reason for that is because as you idle up, notice that this tail gain is connected to my idle up switch. As you idle up, you may want to lower your gain. So this configuration is designed to apply a lower gain as you idle up. In my case right now, I'm not really using using idle up two or three yet when i do start to use those if i see a little bit of change required on the tail gain for headlock mode i'll go ahead and reduce the gain right here and again that's connected to my idle up switch and then the last input is called pitch and that's the collective pitch and notice that is connected to the throttle stick right there okay that's it for inputs let's take a look at the mixer In the mixer, the first four lines are very standard fare. You should have seen this if you set up any kind of model in OpenTX or EdgeTX before. I've got aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder for my mix. And all that does is connect the aileron, elevator, the throttle, which is my switch up here, remember? It connects that to the throttle channel and then the rudder to channel four. Channel five is my tail gain. Notice by default it sends 100% to the icon, that's right here. And if I use the SD switch, I've got a mix line that says replace. Notice that says multiplex is replace. It replaces the output value to be negative 85. And the reason I do that this is a trick I learned from Freddy. When you have your helicopter in headlock mode, if you move the tail boom, the blades will turn. So if you're out carrying the helicopter to the flight line, for example, and you set it down, it's possible your blades might be turned to one side. By using the switch, it allows us to switch out of headlock mode and into rate lock mode at will. And by doing that, it'll recenter your blades. Also, if you're having any kind of oscillation issues, you can generally turn off the headlock mode and go into rate mode, and that should stop oscillation. So that's why that's enabled there on channel five. On channel six, I have pitch. Again, this is where Icon expects to see the pitch control. It's right there on channel six. On channel seven, I mentioned before, I've got rates. That's my SB switch. Under channel eight, I have SF. Remember, that's my momentary switch, and that puts me into rescue mode. So when I lift this up, I go into rescue mode and I get a little alarm sound. So one single line item that says 100% SF and rescue. And then finally, channel nine under SH is a throttle lock and that tells the icon the throttle is locked. Next up is the output screen. You can see this is a pretty simple configuration. You do have to go in and set your endpoints on the min and max so that the icon shows you 100% of movement in the icon software. If you remember, I mentioned earlier that I have extended limits turned on. That's why you see values greater than 100%. At 103 on icon, that shows me 100% of movement. That's why I turned on extended limits so I could go up to 103 on the left and the right, and that gives me all the movement I'm supposed to have in icon. And I do do that for every channel that expects a certain pulse width showing in the icon software. So be prepared to do that on your output screen. Regarding the curves, we've already gone through these, but I'll give you a quick look. There's my idle up one, there's idle up two, and there's idle up three. Notice that these are all two point curves except for idle up one, which is a three point curve. That's all you need. You don't need anything other than a two point curve. All right, next up is global variables. They're not used in this configuration, so we'll skip those. Under logical switches, I have a real simple one. Now, I've talked about how you can shut off tail gain to allow your tail rotor blades to square up and, and recenter. Uh, I found out that Freddie was doing that manually every single time, and I said, you know, you can automate that. So I made a quick little logical switch that's defined as an edge switch. So when SH goes down for a moment, L01 activates for about one second. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this down and you watch this light up. I'm just gonna turn my throttle lock off and watch L1 light up. Okay, so it lit up for just a second. That's L01, that's all it does. Now here's how I apply that. 
in the special functions, I look at L01 and I say, hey, when L01 is active, override channel five, which is the headlock and rate mode channel on icon, and I override that with a negative 44. So when I push that switch down, watch what happens with that SF3. It's just gonna activate for a second. Okay, all that does is it tells the icon, hey, go into rate lock. And once it does that, after one second, the blades true up and they go back to center. And then it goes back into headlock mode. So it's just simple automation to allow your blades to square up before you take off. Also notice I have my SH switch enabling my SD log. So when I unlock the head, the SD logs start recording at 1.5 seconds. And SF1 is just a simple old throttle lock. It overrides channel three with a value of negative 100. That's a very common configuration, even on fixed wing. As for the rest of my special functions, when I pull SF toward me, that enables rescue mode and I have the radio play a sound called siren. It's just kind of this chirping sound that, that lets me know, hey, something's happening. And then the other one is SD down. When I put SD in the down position, that tells me normal mode. They don't have rate mode as an audio track or rate lock, so I just use normal mode to let me know, hey, you changed your gyro. So that's all these two do. And regarding telemetry, these are the telemetry values that are available in my particular setup. Again, your mileage may vary. This is just what's available in my particular arrangement of electronics. All right, that's all I've got on my RC helicopter setup for Edge TX. I hope you found the information useful, and if you did, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when new material hits the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy.